Hello, and welcome to another episode of Amiga Retro Adventures. Today is a revisit on the Amiga 500 Revision 3 motherboard you see before you. This was featured in one of my previous videos with the ACE2 uh, 2 megabyte chip RAM expansion with the Gary adapter. I also added the 512 megabyte Oh, I wish the 512 kilobyte and actually does one uh, megabyte if you have an Amiga 500 via the jumpers here But because this is already configured for the two megabytes of chip RAM I believe the way it's set up it doesn't see any additional RAM But at least I get use of the real-time clock, which is right here the battery and whatnot So that comes in handy. So now it also has a real-time clock installed. I also installed the as you can see with the jumper wire there the uh, the Amiga Kickstart 2.04 ROM as well. That jumper is required, I believe it's from pin 1 to 31 for the addressing for the motherboard to recognize the, the Kickstart. And as you can see, as I pan up here, oh, there we go, it is uh, loaded and just fine. What the purpose of this video is, is um, basically I can put back down here again. There we go. Ideally, the, this has what's the, the ECS chipset as in the two megabyte Agnes. And it should also have the ECS Denise. Now currently I have the OCS Denise. And what I mentioned previously, if I put the ECS Denise in here, I don't get any video output at all. Um, everything seems to be working. The disk drive will boot, all of that fun stuff will happen, but there is no display. So we're going to investigate that because I happen to have the chip right here. The 8373, I believe. Yes, it is. A revision 4. And uh, I'm going to install that in that socket, and uh, I will show you that when we boot up, you'll hear the drive clicking like you do now, but you will not see any video whatsoever. So I'm going to swap out that chip, and I will be right back. And I have returned. So I have installed the ECS chipset Denise, so the ECS version 8373, and you can hear the drive clicking and there's absolutely no video whatsoever now what's interesting is if I hover near one of the pins without that's definitely touching it you'll see there we here there we go there's some kind of signal trying to come in there and then it doesn't do very well afterwards and it'll eventually disappear altogether oh my goodness it's gone and there's a reason for this, which I had to find with the help of the internet. So let me uh, let me get a better view of this here. One moment. Let's see if I can zoom in. Uh, yes. So this is actually the pinout of the. Let me turn off this noise here for a second. There we go. This is the, the pinout of the uh, ECS, sorry, the OCS, Denise. And if you look on this table here, pin 34 says not connected. Now that's why the, uh, I think the OCS version is the 8364? Nope, that, that's Paula. 8362 is the OCS, Denise. So, uh, oh, this is it right there. Lo and behold. But anyway, so pin 34 says not connected, but if I pan up here without dropping the camera, it will say here, the CDAC clock is on pin 34 for the ECS, Denise. Not connected for the OCS, but required for the ECS. So that would explain why there's no video, because there's probably, now I haven't used my multimeter, but there's probably absolutely no connection between the uh, CDAC signal to the uh, ECS Denise. So let's uh, do a quick experiment. I'm going to run a wire quickly between, I believe it will be pin thir 34, like I mentioned before, of the Denise. And I looked on the uh, the schematic, the the underscore CDAC signal um, goes to pin, I believe, one second, 
26 of the Gary chip, which, if I move this out of here, move this over, zoom into the action, get this out of the way. Actually, it doesn't need to be out of the way. It's just there. That's better. Okay. So, oh, that's in the way, though. Ah, uh, you gotta love wires. They're everywhere. Just a uh, mess. There we go. So, these are 48 pin dips, so dual inline package, and it counts from this side, so pin 24 is there, so 25, 26 would be that one, and pin 34 of this chip, if I can get it better in frame, of the ECS Denise is right here. So I'm going to run a jumper between here and the pin on pin 26 on Gary and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to put this back in frame. Uh, zoom out maybe. Yes, that works. My very glossy monitor. Let's see if I can move that back a bit. Okay, not perfect but good enough. So I will turn this on, I will try to do this, I'm going to be very careful as well with the, I'm just going to use the, the, this cable here to jump her between pin 34 of the Denise, pin 26 of the Gary chip. And you can hear by the clicking, it has booted up. So let's see what happens. I will do this very carefully. One moment, please. I gotta hurry up before my monitor shuts off due to lack of signal. Oh, what was that? Yeah, that's the pin there, you can tell, because it's just sensing the ground. This is a clock signal that's required from the Agnes chip, which is the, the CDAX signal. So the fact that I'm, it's detecting a slight ground, even though I'm not actually touching the pin, it's just enough of a signal. So I'm gonna go to the pin 26 of the Gary. Look at that, beautiful. So that's how you can get the ECS Denise to work on the, um, what you call it? Yeah, I just took the cable off, don't worry about it. To work on the Revision 3 motherboard if you upgrade to a full EG, uh, sorry, ECS chipset. Let me uh, pan back down here again. There we go. Now, so I could get this to work if I jumper the wire. Now I could do that underneath, make it nice and clean, no one would see it, but I don't really want to do any modifications to this board. Like I have a lot of 500s, I kind of want to keep this as stock. Like I said, when I'm done with this video, this will go back to the way it was, this will come off, the original Agnes chip will go in, everything will be back the way it was when I got it. But this is a non-destructive way here, like I said, to give you two megabytes of chip RAM on pretty much any Amiga, but especially on the Revision 3 since the the, mega, the the one megabyte or two megabyte upgrade options are very difficult on a Revision 3 motherboard. So without rambling on too much, what I'm going to do oh, is try this device, see if we can get around, if we can have the same luck as doing an upgrade without any modifications to the motherboard at all is to use the Indivision ECS version 2. Now, one neat thing about this uh, board, as I will show you, so I take it out gently from the package, and there it is right there with all its reflective glare. If you notice something about it, and I, and I actually did cover this in one of my previous videos, there's no actual Denise chip socket on this. It plugs into the socket, obviously, down here, but there's no way to put the chip. That's because it's emulated, or it's a better idea is actually copied, in essence, hardware-wise, into an FP, FPGA. So this is actually a nice option if your Denise chip has exploded for some apparent reason or died, um, you can replace it by using this board, because the, the main advantage of this is not just to replace your Denise, it gives you a VGA output as well. And uh, the software lets you do scanline emulation or, or not if you don't want it, but various screen modes to work with various televisions, it's really, really nice. So the ECS, the Indivision ECS 
version two, because obviously it's the version one. Actually, you had to put the uh, I'll show you in here, like the, this isn't it here, but the, you would have had to put the Denise chip in in a socket. But this one actually has it within, like I said, the FPGA right here. And uh, this is good for, for the purpose of this video, though. I'm going to take this off. I don't really care about the VGA. You don't have to use this output. I mean, for what I'm doing here, you can just use this as a drop-in replacement. But I haven't tried this. We will find this out together if this will work inside, in it, sorry, as a replacement in here without any modifications at all of, for the Denise chip, the ECS Denise. So I'm going to plug that in there and I will be right back. Hello. And as you can see, I have installed the ECS version 2 from Indivision. Now I have a feeling this may not work because that is a clock signal that's missing on the socket. Maybe. I'm not sure. Let's have an old valve. Either the chip itself doesn't detect it or it's not wired at all from the, uh, from the Agnes. So we shall see. So let's, uh, let's see if this will work without that jumper wire from pin 34 of the Denise to pin 26 of the Gary, which actually connects to the Agnes chip. Well, here goes absolutely nothing. Let's see if it works. Let me see if I can uh, turn this on. And the answer is no. Oh, I lied. The answer is yes. Yes. See, I was not patient enough. And there you go. So I can use the Indivision ECS version 2, the, uh, and with the advantage, of course, of the uh, VGA output and stuff, and all that fun stuff. Like I just said, stuff twice, but oh well. But uh, there you go. So another awesome victory without having to modify, oops, wrong direction, anything at all. So as you can see, with the Revision 3, Amiga 500 motherboard, two megabytes of chip RAM, full ECS chipset having the Denise with the uh, Indivision ECS version 2. Excellent. If I didn't have this, like you saw, I would have to use that jumper wire from pin 34 from the Denise to pin 26 of the Gary, which connects also directly to one of the pins on the Agnes chip, because it's the one of the clock signals that comes out of here. So uh, it must be generated internally somehow by that beast. And there you go. So now you, you know, you can modify a very old motherboard, the very poorly, almost impossible to find documented Amiga 500 Revision 3 motherboard. And it's expanded to pretty much the best it can be of any 500 without any soldering or any hardware trace hacking at all. Beautiful. And that's it. I don't have... Uh, much else to say about this, except for I'm glad everything worked out really well. Um, if you're wondering about part two of the uh, Commodore, the uh, Commodore, six, uh, sorry, the C64 Reloaded Mark II video, uh, part two of that is a bit delayed. I'm waiting for a uh, basically a scan converter so I can output to my capture card. Uh, the one I currently have doesn't work very well with the Commodore 64, so I want to you know make sure the video is the best I can for for the, for the next uh, video I make. So there we go. So hopefully that will be uh, sometime in March, probably near the end, when I have the parts and have the video created. And uh, I'll have part two of that released at that time. So that's it. And like always, thank you for watching. Yes, I actually wanted to show you uh, that it does load off of the workbench disk that I created. So it booted into workbench. You have your two megabytes minus whatever was used by the boot up process up there. And uh, of course, no expansion memory at the moment. And uh, everything seems to work just fine. I would say everything is a go. I might uh, try a quick game in here and uh, see how that works. I'm actually gonna also put back the uh, the 1.2 ROM as well to see what happens with that. Technically, actually, the 2.04 and up uh, is part of the ECS chipset as well. I'm not sure if there's, there's probably like 
code in the ROM that takes advantage of the new Agnes and new Denise as well. So I'm going to put the 1.2 ROM back in there and uh, we'll see if we get some kind of screen still. That would be the ultimate test. I will be back. Hello. And I have returned. I have returned indeed. As you can see, we have Alien Breed 93 Special Edition up and running. Using the Indivision ECS version 2, the 2 megabytes of chip RAM, all that fun stuff. Seems to be working just fine, but the ultimate test, can I actually get beyond the title screen? Let us find out. Start game. A bit of a loading sequence that awaits us. I will quickly get past that. Ah yes, the sounds of floppy access. Brings you back to the day when waiting was actually something that you uh, did a lot and you had lots of patience. Much patience. I said patience. Ah, I had to push the button, apparently. Yes, this game I have played many times, and I have died even more times than I have played it, if that makes any sense. Oh. So as you can see, everything works just great. Um, and that's pretty much it for this video. I would uh, like to thank everybody for watching. If you want to subscribe to the channel, or if you want to like this video, you know what to do. And like I said, uh, hopefully I will soon have the... Uh, which we call it the C64 uh, Reloaded Mark II Part Two video by the end of March. Once I get all the parts I need to make a pretty good video, and that's it for the moment. And as always, thanks for watching.